Hello everybody, welcome to game three in this best of three series between Hexapus and Andreas G, who's currently calling himself CNN. I am Philothanic and joining me today is Blues. Blues, besides an obvious Zoltar map, what else can you tell me about this one? Uh, yeah, I mean, the chaos is really most of what you can spot. It's hard to even see a place to land next to resources. There are probably scav spots available. There's some decent carbon, not great. It has adjacency to a silicon in a few places, which is something you can maybe work with, especially with power starting high. Otherwise, you're really looking at this iron in the northeast corner, which really doesn't have much else going for it. No, that well, that iron is next to one of the two high water tiles on the map. The only one with adjacency. It's also on the other near. hand, the map is covered in ice, so maybe you don't worry about that too much. Scavenger HQ has been found. Instead, both players decide to found on the opposite side of the map, both going into Scavenger. I don't quite understand Hexpus is found in particular. It's a lot farther away from the carbon he's taking than it needs to be, and it's also farther away from the aluminum. It's farther away from just maybe he wanted the bit of extra space but it doesn't feel like that was worth quite that much andreas on the other hand is going for a close nearby high carbon and a really far high carbon all the way to the south of hexapus's aluminum mine i can't say i agree with that decision Though he was definitely going to have some issues with carbon regardless. Hexpus. Both players operating on very little. Hexpus is the first to HQ2, although Andreas is not very far behind. Now, one, Andreas does have some water nearby, but Hexpus is going to have to rely on ice. And let's see, one thing we didn't mention about the colony, it is an electronics colony, although this colony uh, does not only want to be an electronics, it will spawn both an office module and a laboratory. Diversifying as much as possible. It is concerning to me that Hexbus chose to take this uh, adjacent low silicon in particular instead of the one adjacent to his carbon. Yes, that does make it a bit more... Uh, black market resistant and it saves spin on fuel but you really need that extra carbon three a second is not very good especially if you're going to be going to wind and when your opponent's only operating on four a second going into chems it's just going to be a very slow progression going into triple chems when food is high that's interesting okay. Right, and fuel already climbing towards 100. Andreas is shipping quite a long distance with that carbon you pointed out. So this is just going to be very painful for him. He is now burning through 2.3 a second in fuel. 2.5. Depends how many of these freighters are in the air. Either way, it's a lot. So with all that in mind, I kind of really like Hexbus's play into power so quickly. Just because both players are going to be so slow moving off the bat, this is something that is works to that advantage. Because then your opponent isn't going to have an easy time getting to power himself. He's going to really be stuck at that all game long. Although, he does get to that upgrade faster than I anticipated. Well, that's in part because Hexapus is not pulling in any carbon whatsoever. Andreas freezing out both of Hexapus's elemental quarries. Carbon is cheap, but Hexapus only has 2k in the bank and is another... No, 10, 5 or 5 to 7 seconds away from actually making power money. One thing I should point out is that Hexpus was trying to do a little bit of uh, fuel purchasing to make these chems more difficult. The problem with that is that you're of course going to be consuming the fuel yourself with your shipping. So you're kind of eating away your own money and at a rate faster than you're really hurting your opponent. It's something that hurt me in my uh, game against Dubin back then, but uh, it's something that really slowed Hexpus down a bit here as well. Uh, Hexpus punishing Andreas for the this building placement. I really 
don't know why he decided to link all of his buildings together. There's plenty there's of just no reason for that. Plenty of room to the north of his HQ to spread out. Expo's just reminding everybody why you uh, don't want to do this. Expos is running into pretty significant problems though. This freeze on his carbon really hurt. He's really been slowed down by that. His power's fallen off quite a bit. This these life support costs are just too high for him to really push through. Yes. He is moving out of his lone silicon mine. Hasn't decided what to replace it with yet, or if he even can afford to replace it with anything. He decides to move right back into it. Which is fair enough. Maybe he could have put down a single farm or something along those lines. Andrei These turbines could... Yeah, go ahead. But Andreas is finally moving into some electrolysis reactors. Uh, separated by one solar condenser just to add some more water income. Uh, he really needs to put a goon squad on either this greenhouse farm or the solar condenser, so that way Hexabus can't goons. freeze everything out. Instead, he paints a big target on his back, daring Hexabus to freeze him and delay his HQ upgrade even further. Seems to be working out for him, though. Hexabus really struggling for cash right now. That early carbon freeze is slowing him down so much. It doesn't feel like he can afford to sell down some of that carbon and put down the freeze, though. It probably was necessary. Right, Andreas is making $840 off of food alone. He's currently auto-selling food, which is a slight mistake as Hexplus is not in food. Might want to keep that food price high just a little bit, just to make sure that Hexapus's wind turbines earn him as little money as possible. Actually, they're not earning any money as they're, they're, they don't even cover Hexapus's food debt. Right. At some point, I think these turbines Come needed to become solar condensers. Just enable him to really move into these life support markets. Power is dead. You're not going to be able to do anything with power for quite some time. No, you're going to get no help from the colony either, as it decided only to have one office module and uh, go into a machine shop and two more laboratories. This uh, pan lab only gets one adjacency bonus from its location. We'll see what Andreas G has in mind with the that patent. Expus power surging, those adrenaline boosted tiles. A little bit too late, but uh, better than never. Andreas is floating at sea debt right now at HQ for 114k in debt, so he's going to have to decide if he's going to just ride that line between C and D, try and end the game really quick before it even matters, or uh, pull a game slayer and ignore it completely. Right, there definitely is room for him to end the game quickly. All these life support prices are so high. If he can just manage to keep that production online, he should be able to make enough money to threaten Hexbus very quickly. But Hexbus definitely has to be looking at this debt as his real way back into the game. Instead, he decided to pay down his debt, which earned him a B bond rating right before the interest tick, which bumped him back into C. Good timing. He would have pretty easily plunged straight into D, I think, without that, so... These uh, pirates are going to be very annoying for Hexapus, although uh, it'll depend what they hit, whether they're hitting... They're currently hitting silicon, which is what Andreas probably wants, as he has no silicon income and two glass kilns. Hexapus at no, HQ3 is moving into a hacker array again. This feels like a mistake. It feels like he's trying to do something to get back into things, but it's hard to see what he's going to do with this. Maybe more power hacks, but again, 
if you're going to do these power hacks, I would really like to see them try to get the price up before they start. Let the bidding begin. Yes, he did stop auto selling power. So they probably should have stopped auto selling it earlier if the plan was to go into power hacks. And the game ironically decides for energy ball auction, but nobody. Excuse me, nobody bids on it. Instead, he's going to uh, put a shortage on silicon. Andreas is two HQs ahead, moving up to HQ5. He's going into two wind turbines. A move that frankly makes no sense. His power is only 37. What it, it does do a nice job of... Uh perhaps preventing a power hack sort of play, but right, I'm not sure that's something Andreas really was looking for. It just maybe something a reaction to his high debt. I don't know, I'd rather go into more life support items, make all the money, start buying into Hexapus, and end it right here. And who cares Definitely. about what your debt is? I mean, even so, he has enough to make a move on it right now, and Hexapus Real doesn't look like he has any income to stock him, so... Start buying, Andreas. There we go. Picking up teleportation. I don't foresee the game going anywhere long enough for that to matter in the slightest. Hexpus calling the GG, realizing he's pretty dead. And we just have to wait for Andreas to earn an additional 10k. We have it. Andreas G takes the series two games to one. And a very, very difficult to parse Zoltar map for this last game. Right. Definitely felt like a lot of Hexpus's immediate problems came down to the found. Just being so far away from his resources. Uh, not necessarily just having any advantages to where he was. Meanwhile, Andreas gets to get moving much faster. He's able to get into these important markets faster, get to HQ3 faster. I definitely was concerned about the move into chems early, especially committing to three chems, but it ended up making Andreas just enough money to get to HQ3 and really just keep pushing that advantage. Right, versus, Move into... versus Hexapus moving into those two windmills, they really, I don't think they really ever paid off his debt the entire uh, game. He did make some small amount of power money, but right, by that time, life support prices were going out of control, and he just stayed in the wind turbines too long, and maybe it just wasn't the best of plays without having any sort of supplemental carbon slowing him down a bit too much does say that he sold 42k worth of power but on the other hand he purchased 46k worth of food 83k worth of fuel some of that was him trying to drive up the fuel price but no that that power really didn't cover itself whatsoever Right. Part of the problem with going to power quite so early in any game is that it just never rises high enough for you to really pay off your debt and start making a significant amount of money. Especially with two scavengers on the board, just there weren't there wasn't enough power demand, only one that one office early. It was a very very uh, critical uh, power surge by Andreas when Hexapus was still at HQ2 that kind of left him loitering around there. Which uh, did Hexapus no favors 
for the amount of time it took him to get HQ3. Just looking at the uh, charts and graphs to see if there's anything interesting to talk about. Andreas only, this is interesting, Andreas only through Black Market at Hexapus twice versus Hexapus five times against Andreas, but um, perhaps Andreas is receiving more value from those two attacks. Especially since Andreas was, instead of attacking, using these boosts that really pushed things even farther apart. <laughs> 